Lines you wouldn't hear in a war film. We've managed to crack the Germans' code. Turns out they were sending messages in German. <laughs> Why are we speaking English? <laughs> I'm afraid we can't afford goggles. So what we're going to have to do, we're all going to have to go like this. <laughs> Terribly sorry, Sergeant. It's just that when you said let's all band together and take Jerry from behind... <laughs> OK, chaps, here's the strategy for escaping from the prisoner of war camp. We sit it out till the end of the war. <laughs> I'm saving Private Ryan money on his car insurance. <laughs> Is anyone else embarrassed that we've all turned up in the same outfit? <laughs> uh, there's only one way to settle this war. For the medium of dance. <laughs> Don't worry, Tommy. I'll, I'll make sure she gets it. It's chlamydia, isn't it? <laughs> You've each been selected for this mission because you're unknown to the enemy and you each have a special skill. Professor Hawking, John Leslie, Phil Neville, the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> Usher, the Sugar Puffs Monster, and Daniel Day-Lewis. Welcome to Operation Mindfuck. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the boys go to Frankie, Hugh and Adam. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Things you wouldn't hear on a news programme. And the markets are as followed. Free pound of loose banana there! <laughs> Free pound of juicy straws! <laughs> well, he went in half an hour ago and he still hasn't come out, so I can only assume he's having a very big poo. <laughs> Sad news now. Wally has been found. <laughs> His funeral's next week. No one knows where, but that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> As I stand here in this village where the water is ridden with disease and human faeces, we have to ask ourselves one question. Why did I choose to wear flip-flops? <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just wanted to check something. I'm standing just a stone's throw from where the meeting is taking place. <laughs> With thousands dead, there looks like no end to the bloodshed. I've been Holly Walsh for the BBC, reporting for Midsummer. <laughs> Welcome to Fox News. The bastards have been through the bins again and shit on the drive. <laughs> And the Italian wing of Heinz soup has been put into administroni. <laughs> I'm on the scene where the search continues for the beloved pantomime star. What's that? <laughs> He's where? <laughs> <laughs> the fighting here has been drawn out and bloody, but I have finally got my microphone back from that bastard at Sky News. <laughs> We cross live now to the King's Road, where Jose Mourinho has no trousers or pants on and is telling the pigeons it's the referee's fault. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Barry Chuckle on the scene of the crime. Barry, to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good news. I've just been talking to the American ambassador and I said to him, surely now Osama bin Laden has gone from terrorist to martyr. He said, we say tomato. <laughs> Is there sexism at the BBC? 
let's ask Sally Johnson, who's our lovely smiles and pretty cakes correspondent. <laughs> This is the first time I have reported from the Pamplona Bull Run. Fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on a property show. Six months in and Mike has fallen out with the builder. There was no window there and neither of them noticed. <laughs> <laughs> with violence and strong language from the very beginning, it's... <laughs> A place in the Sunderland. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, it is north-facing, but on the plus side, it's a caravan, so you can just turn it round. <laughs> <laughs> Get that fish out of here, it stinks. You should never leave a place in the sun. <laughs> We've just one hour while Jean is at the shops to improve her flat in Luton. We're setting it on fire and moving it to Oxford. <laughs> well, it's another setback. This time the structure is damaged. And for the first time I'm asking myself, will the Death Star ever be finished? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, more information on how to get together a deposit for a house can be found in our free leaflet, When Will Nana Die? <laughs> so, you bought it at auction for £100,000, but what exactly are you going to do with Middlesbrough? <laughs> <laughs> well, what we've done is we've knocked the wall between the kitchen and the lounge down, and what that's done is killed all the people who are sitting in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> the kitchen's done in a very modern style. We call it crack den. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking at a well-equipped council house in Hull. Fridge, oven, washing machine. In fact, this is one of the nicest gardens we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Grand Designs, my grand designs a house. Uh, <laughs> It will be shit. She's got terrible arthritis and not even a rudimentary qualification. <laughs> Three coats of varnish and a new rug, and Brucey is ready for his next show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 74 hour long obsessive compulsive episode of How Clean Is Your House? <laughs> Knock it down, tarmac it, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... on likely things to hear in a maternity ward. Mr Parsons, your baby looks exactly like you. <laughs> but, mind you, so does every other baby. <laughs> there are complications, I'm afraid, for a start. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I definitely can see the head. You should do your flies up, Doctor. <laughs> Bad news, I'm afraid. He's ginger. <laughs> Your Highness. <laughs> so, uh, would you like to hold the little fella? Or sh shall I give you the baby? <laughs> Mrs Jones, I'm going to need you to push. And then when we've got the ambulance started, we'll try and get you to hospital. <laughs> oh, God, is that my baby? I've given birth to Andy Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> I'd stay up that end and talk to your wife if I were you, Mr Smith. It looks like Alien vs Predator down here. <laughs> And this is the ward for unwanted twins. We call it the Jed Ward. <laughs> Basically, you just turn them over and slap them on the arse. These nurses' parties are great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Nice to see you again, Mrs. Jolie. Um, if you'd like to just move along to the next window to collect your order. <laughs> This isn't your first baby, is it? <laughs> you have a bouncing baby boy. I know that because I dropped him in the delivery room. <laughs> <laughs> OK, big breath, big breath in, hold it, hold it, and pass the joint to the midwife. <laughs> If you're not in when we deliver your baby, is it OK if we leave it with a neighbour? <laughs> no, no, I do like it, darling. Just not in that colour. <laughs> I, know, I know you're in great pain, but we need to know your name. <laughs> right. Doctor for Mrs Fuckoff. <laughs> Andy. Bad ways to start a party political broadcast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow paedophiles. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> As you know, the football is on the other channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that it is mostly the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm John Prescott. Now, I expect you're wondering why I'm making... <laughs> <laughs> I think our policies are best expressed... ..in song! <laughs> During the next three and a half hours... <laughs> now, look, we all know we're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Death to the West. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what the voices in my head are telling me. <laughs> OK, our next topic is... Things you'd never hear a French person say. <laughs> of course, it looked hopeless, but we kept fighting. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of Burgundy and a Dairy Lee Dunker, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're English. How nice to meet you. <laughs> J'aime beaucoup, Monsieur Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I've just bought a wonderful little holiday home in the south of Birmingham. <laughs> <clears throat> My favourite road? Well, that's got to be the A303. <laughs> uh, at night, in many ways, it's quicker than the M4 and you get to go past Stonehenge. <laughs> if you're going London to the West Country, it's A303 for me every time. <laughs> what a road. What a road. <laughs> and we throw that part of the animal away. <laughs> <laughs> OK, our next topic is what the voices in Tony Blair's head are saying. You will obey! <laughs> Keep smiling, have Gordon killed. Keep smiling, <laughs> have Gordon killed. <laughs> Cherie, will you shut the f*** up? Okay. <laughs> oh, look, there's Cherie. That reminds me, I must post a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot laugh. <laughs> I wonder what John Prescott looks like in hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> Mustn't get a stiffy. <laughs> Damn it, got a stiffy. <laughs> 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 
Go on, lie. You got away with it last time. <laughs> Well done, everyone. Oh, come back and sit down. Oh, and right, we're here in a science program. 1643. The cold air balloon is invented. <laughs> but it doesn't really take off. <laughs> For Einstein, it was easy to choose a DJ name. He would be MC Squared. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr Gillian McKeith, and today I'll be sifting through your poop. Why? Because I was never hugged as a child. <laughs> <laughs> now on five, crop circles, myth or bollocks? <laughs> Next, to demonstrate chaos theory, we've locked Boris Johnson in a room with an aardvark and some magic mushrooms. <laughs> I was the man who discovered DNA. I wasn't going to call it that, but I was giving a lecture to the Royal Society, and I said, gentlemen, I believe I've discovered the genetic fingerprint of all human life. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> I've been Richard Dawkins. Good night, and God bless. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Thanks to carbon dating, this skeleton is now going out with a short-sighted geology student who likes thin people that don't talk much. <laughs> 1891. Sir Alexander Graham Benn receives the first wrong number telephone call. <laughs> he realised that this equation was going to take him absolutely years. So he switched to a media studies course, which was a piece of piss. <laughs> I did have here a pie chart to demonstrate obesity. <laughs> Apart from the human, the only animal to enjoy having sex is a dolphin. I had to shag a lot of animals to find that out. <laughs> I'm a meerkat, she's not lying. <laughs> Tonight we'll be discussing molecular science. Our guests are Sir Patrick Moore, Robert Winston and Dappy off of N-dubs. <laughs> <laughs> With their tiny arms, could the T-Rex self-pleasure? Let's find out in another edition of Wanking with Dinosaurs. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to Russell, Holly and Andy. OK, here we go. The first subject is lines that you'd never hear in a Bond film. Ingenious Q. It's a bomb, but it's also a rucksack. <laughs> <coughs> James, what a wonderful present. Chlamydia. <laughs> My name is Bond, Mohammed Bond. <laughs> Everything's ready for your mission, Bond. All you need to do is fill in this health and safety risk assessment. <laughs> Mr. Bond, have you ever kissed a man? <laughs> You're very good at poker, but let's see how you do on the fruit machines. <laughs> your new car, Bond? A Ford Focus. <laughs> I'll have an egg roll. Scrambled, not boiled. <laughs> Let me get this straight. There's an evil tyrant at the top of a mountain surrounded totally by armed guards. Do you know, I don't fancy it. <laughs> it's not just a baseball bat, Bond. It's a baseball bat with a nail through it. <laughs> Oh, James, is it meant to be this soft? <laughs> We're getting away. We'll get after them in this pedalo. <laughs> We'd better slow down. There are speed cameras. <laughs> I hope you're not going to be one of those Russian agents whose name is just a cheap sexual pun, Miss Suck Me Off. <laughs> TV shows that never made it to air. 
The boy whose arms and arse and head fell off. <laughs> he robs from the rich and the poor. It's Robin Hoodie. <laughs> and now the magic of Britain's parks at night as Bill Oddie presents Gay Watch. <laughs> On BBC Two, Jack Straw's What Not to Wear. <laughs> I'm Wayne Rooney, and welcome to Granny's Do the Filthiest Things. <laughs> welcome to Blind Date with me, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> BBC One, it's the senile dementia show. Where do you think you are? <laughs> this week on Who Do You Think You Are, Prince Harry traces his family tree with some surprising results. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it that, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to all of you. Points go to Frankie, Hugh and Gina. <laughs> on likely lines from a children's book. Mr. Stubborn wouldn't leave. He was the elected leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow you, Keith Vaz. <laughs> As Noddy looked at his new friends, Rampant Rabbit and Linda the Love Egg, he realised he was in a very different kind of toy town. <laughs> And all the animals of Buttercup Farm celebrated because Percy Pig was going to the slaughterhouse and they never had to listen to that whiny little bastard again. <laughs> and the beautiful woman was cursed to sleep for a hundred years. And that's your defence, is it, Mr Cosby? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't do it. Don't boo her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paddington Bear from Peru, said Paddington. And if you show me where the toilet is, I'll poo out this condom of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the absolutely horrific follow-up to Netflix and Chill. Swallows and Amazons. <laughs> <laughs> and was there a happy ending? Well, the prince did love massage parlours. I will never tell you my name. You will have to guess my name, said Rumpelstiltskin, really holding up the queue at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> From under the bridge came the voice of the troll. Where wow, women can't be Ghostbusters, send! <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Jack and Jill have to walk up a hill to fetch just one pail of water. <laughs> but for just five pounds a month... <laughs> Oh, it wasn't a giant peach after all, thought James, as he watched the big friendly giant put on his swimming trunks. <laughs> he pushed aside the clothes and there, at the back of the wardrobe, found a magical land of nipple clamps and lube. <laughs> in the cupboard. I think he's hiding from you, Kip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, come on, come <laughs> sir. I've been in this cupboard for bloody ages. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear on a quiz show. You've already used your 50-50 to narrow down the options to A, in, or B, out. Mr Cameron, are you sure you want to ask the audience? <laughs> <laughs> well, in that round on sexually transmitted diseases, you passed on four. <laughs> <laughs> we asked you for things that start with an E. You said, a great night out with the lads. <laughs> Welcome to Britain's only quiz about birds of prey. Fingers on buzzards, please. <laughs> Here at The Chase, we just want to reiterate that our chase is not called The Dark Destroyer for any ethnic reasons. 
<laughs> now, please, could you welcome our new chaser, Raj the Head Wobbler Patel. <laughs> So the final round on OAP quiz is sudden death. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Eggheads. Well, we couldn't call it smug pricks, could we? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Tipping Point for people who are too thick to follow the chase. <laughs> <laughs> Name. Keith Vaz. I mean, Jim. <laughs> Occupation, MP. I mean, washing machine salesman! <laughs> I'm afraid we're gonna have to take your first answer, so let's see if the capital of Azerbaijan is... Fuck the fino. <laughs> <laughs> is that your final answer? I'll marry someone else, then. <laughs> Well, at the end of this week's episode of University Challenge, the scores are Durham 170, Exeter 145. But, of course, the real winner is Ivo's dad, Hugh at home, who got two questions right and is going to bang on about it for the rest of the bloody week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've given the contestants their meth and sent them to Hampton Court. Welcome to the Crystal Maze. <laughs> My chosen specialised subject, uh, your wife. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> <sighs> I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the banker, and he says he thinks you're going to accept this deal because in his box is your wife. <laughs> Well, today it's Kelly Brook and Joey Essex versus Stevens Hawking and Fry. This is fucking pointless. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to rubbish and an eyeball. On Life is Interesting here in the Science Programme. 1643. The cold air balloon is invented. <laughs> but it doesn't really take off. For Einstein, it was easy to choose a DJ name. He would be MC Squared. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr Gillian McKeith, and today I'll be sifting through your poop. Why? <laughs> because I was never hugged as a child. <laughs> <laughs> now on five, crop circles, myth or bollocks? <laughs> Next, to demonstrate chaos theory, we've locked Boris Johnson in a room with an aardvark and some magic mushrooms. <laughs> I was the man who discovered DNA. I wasn't going to call it that, but I was giving a lecture to the Royal Society, and I said, gentlemen, I believe I've discovered the genetic fingerprint of all human life. Ta-da! <laughs> I've been Richard Dawkins. Good night and God bless. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Thanks to carbon dating, this skeleton is now going out with a short-sighted geology student who likes thin people that don't talk much. <laughs> 1891. Sir Alexander Graham Benn receives the first wrong number telephone call. <laughs> He realised that this equation was going to take him absolutely years, so he switched to a media studies course, which was a piece of piss. <laughs> Apart from the human, the only animal to enjoy having sex is a dolphin. I had to shag a lot of animals to find that out. <laughs> I'm a meerkat, she's not lying. <laughs> Tonight, we'll be discussing molecular science. Our guests are Sir Patrick Moore, Robert Winston and Dappy off of N-dubs. <laughs> <laughs> With their tiny arms, could the T-Rex self-pleasure? Let's find out in another edition of Wanking with Dinosaurs. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point is going to rustle Holly and 